Go ahead and call me a coward and say I'm not strong because I'm not like you. This was Arthur Basad. It was last message to his followers on Facebook at 1.26 p.m. on Tuesday. Basad Idwa had also posted to his WhatsApp status and not saying, I'm sorry, but it is too late. I'm sorry, too much weighing on me and I don't want to live to see another day. However, this cries for help went unnoticed. According to one of his friends, Michael Wadada, these messages were only re-echoing what he had already told them that afternoon. Although at that time, they had tried to discourage him from this train of thought. And Arthur was like having this kind of talk, you guys, this could be the last time you're seeing me. And you know, I think they, 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 they thought it was a joke. And Andrew in his explanation to me tells me that he went ahead and tried to ask him, tell him please read the Bible, pray to your God and everything. But you know, he was this kind of person who was very proud of himself. When he decided something, he would stand by it. Wadada says that he first became aware of Basalidwa's suicidal tendencies back in 2011 when they were still students at Makere Business School. The, the, the time it happened would be like, okay, it's just happened, maybe he was just so much into it, he had given it a lot of it and he wasn't sharing very much about the disagreements and everything. So it wasn't something we were very much considering and a very big issue. Whereas Basalidwa was an active young man who freely associated with others, Wadada says he also had a dark side. The rumors and the talk was that he has had this history before, like especially when it comes to relationships, that uh, he was the kind of person who didn't know how to handle reject. I, actually, some, some of his close friends uh, can testify that he had anger issues. Now, Wadada believes that more could have been done to save his young friend. According to Dr. Paul Nyende, a psychologist and lecturer at Makere University School of Psychology, issues relating to mental health in Uganda have steadily been on the rise. Mental health problems are on a wide spectrum, stemming from fears, anxieties that are very common indeed. Each one of us has uh, some fears. Among the most silent issues are clinical depression, personality and destructive disorders, and self-harming. And of course the more serious problems like uh, the bipolar disorder because these are seen to be problems where there is a loss of attachment with the reality and uh, schizophrenia which we often refer to as madness. Dr. Nyende also defines some signs and symptoms that may be exhibited by victims of mental illness especially depression. It's mainly sadness, it's the main emotion. You feel sad, you feel worthless, you feel helpless, hopeless useless and discouraged. He further notes that many of the victims contemplating suicidal thoughts make cries for help which have to be taken seriously. So if you come out and talk to the person, analyze the situation, what is your problem, calm yourself down and calm them down, you are actually telling them that there is something that can be done. Last year, the executive director of Butabika Hospital, Dr. David Basangwa, revealed that out of the 150 people who visit this hospital, 40 to 50 percent are admitted with depressive illness. Joyce Nakato, NTV Weekend Edition.